welcome to the class last class we have discussed about idealization of structures so in this class we will be more focused on superposition of principal superposition and the equi equi equation of equilibrium so although both the topic you may have studied uh, in the first year strength of material course uh, so this course this class uh, i'll just recapitulate what you have studied in the earlier classes so what is equilibrium of structure so if s body is in rest before application of the load and the same body after you apply a load if still it is in equilibrium condition then we call it this body is in equilibrium so if the body is in rest or in the same position before application of load and after application of load like f1 f2 f3 f4 these are actually external forces applied to this body so after application of this load if the body is still in the rest position then we call it the equilibrium of the body or equilibrium of structure so what the things need to be satisfied to become equilibrium of structure is one very important thing is all the forces summation of all the forces acting on this body must be equal to zero so that if that condition is satisfied then only we will call you will call that the body is in equilibrium so just i want to again reemphasize what is equilibrium equilibrium means if the body is in rest before and after application of the load then we will call it this body is in equilibrium for example this body is in rest before applying the f1 f2 f3 f4 for all these loads so these loads are basically the external loads applied so before applying the load the body is in rest and after applying the load also this body is still in the rest condition then we call it this body is in equilibrium so what are the conditions it should meet is obviously first one is if all the summation of all the forces acting on the body if it is zero then only the body will be rest right so these are the equilibrium equation so summation of all the forces so summation of all the forces about x axis if it is zero if summation of all the forces about y axis is zero summation of all the forces about z axis is zero summation of all the moments about x axis summation of all the moments about y axis and summation of all the moments about z axis if all the six equations are satisfied in a particular body or a structure then we will call it the structure is in equilibrium that means the structure is in rest even after the application of load so in 3d structure or in any real structure so basically 3d structure so these six conditions equations must be satisfied then only our structure will call it is in equilibrium but whatever problems we will solve in this class we will make it as 2d problem so 2d means if the load forces are acting in two dimensional condition means x and y there won't be any z so then we will call it it is a 2d structure so in 2d structure basically you will have three equilibrium equations summation of all the forces about x axis is equal to 0 summation of all the forces about y axis is equal to 0 and summation of all the moments about z axis please remember for 2d structure summation of all the forces about x axis is equal to 0 summation of all the forces about y axis is equal to 0 and summation of moment about z axis z axis means this axis so if you take a moment in this plane x y plane the moment you should take about the z axis so that's why it is z is summation of all the forces about z x should be equal to 0 so basically these are the equations of equilibrium if a body satisfies all the equations then only we will call it this body is in equilibrium so what is coplanar force system so sometimes what will happen in this course obviously we will discuss more about the 2d structure so 2d body if you, you can consider this body is also a 2d body and the few external forces are acting on this body what are this f1 f2 f3 and f4 so these are the four body uh, four uh, external forces acting on this body at, at this point about this point so you can see that all the forces are acting through this point so that for that system actually we will call it concurrent force means if all the external forces are acting through a body through a point actually on a body that we call it point of concurrent so all the forces are actually passing through this point then we will call it this body is uh, they, this force is all forces we will call it a concurrent force so in concurrent force if you see summation of all the forces is equal to zero summation of x summation of y and summation of z so even though it satisfies the equation of equilibrium but 
if you take uh, any moment if, if you apply any particular another external force here and this then the body will be trying to rotate so that's why if a body is a concurrent force is applied in a body then the body is may not be the stable so it may rotate about particular axis or it may move so whenever you find a structure having a concurrent force is acting on it then the body won't be stable Similarly, if all the forces in a body is parallel to each other, then also our structure or the, our body may not be stable. So after, so the, the, the body may not be in rest after application of load. That is, we meant the stability or the equilibrium. So concurrent coplanar co for, uh, force system means when if the all the forces are acting on a 2D plane then we'll call it coplanar force system for example here all the f1 f2 f3 f4 all the forces are uh, uh, acting on on this 2d plane so this is a co uh, that coplanar force system and if all the forces are acting through a single point passing through a single point then we'll call it concurrent forces and if all the forces are parallel to each other then we'll call it parallel forces so please note make sure that if the body is having all the forces are concurrent force means all the forces are uh, passing through a particular point then this body may not be the stable similarly if all the forces are parallel to each other then also this body is not a stable body so here just i want to take uh, a case study to demonstrate how actually structural stability uh, is affected so here is a case study of uh, settler's bridge so you can see this is a bridge where it is constructed more than 100 years before so this is the original bridge now what i did is i just removed this portion this uh, uh, arch portion i have just removed so this is our after removing this portion now this is our suspension bridge if you see so this entire bridge girder or bridge uh, bridge slab is resting on this cable suspension cable so this suspension cable is basically tied into this rope or chain here so what you'll see, so this is our uh, structure and all this slab is actually resting on this cable and hanging on these uh, small small wires. So whatever load is acting on this slab, it is just transferred through these wires into this main cable, main suspension cable. So when the vehicle or any person is going to this side, so whatever load it exerts, that load is actually transferred through this cable to this main cable shaft cable so what will happen is now this shaft cable now this is this figure now now this load is transferred to this cable so this cable is now in a compression in this direction and uh, this the cable will now apply a force to this uh, foundation or the we call it column or pyre basically so this pyre will now experience this direction pull so now if you see this free body diagram this your cable is exerting in this direction force so if you just may make this force in two component one is horizontal component and another is vertical component so vertical component is acting downwards and horizontal force is acting in this direction so now this is a pyre so whatever force is acting in this direction uh, this pyre is also resting on a soil so soil also will give opposite direction so this vertical force whatever is generated that we can manage through this pyre so this for whatever force is exerted this will be simply transmitted to the soil here but what about this horizontal force so because of this horizontal force this pillar or this pyre actually trying to rotate in this direction so there is no force actually to resist or withstand this horizontal force so that's why we have to install this extra pyre at the top sorry extra arc at the, uh, connecting to the two pyre so this arc will now produce a thrust to this pyre and through this thrust actually whatever horizontal force we, had, we have discussed that will be resolved so that horizontal force is generated because of this and that force is actually taken care by this arc so this arc is compulsory so if you don't provide this horizontal arc connecting two pyre then your structure will collapse so some question of thought here so this see this bridge is approximately 100 years over so what are the other options do you find to manage this force 
So one option is they installed the art here to take care of this extra horizontal force. So what could be another alternative? What do you think? Uh, now, and another question is what would be the most likely location for a strength or the stability failure of the bridge? So this is one failure. If you don't provide this arc, then your then the structure is not stable. So it will simply collapse, and this pyre will and both the pyre will simply collapse. So what might be the any alternative design to withstand this horizontal thrust? So what do you think? So please uh, give a thought and just let me know in the next class or in the comment section, whatever you are thinking. So now another very important uh, principle we'll discuss now, which will be required for the entire course of the structure analysis and even in design also in the next semester when you will study. So principle of superposition. So what is the principle of superposition? The principle says the total displacement or internal loading at a point in a structure subjected to several external loading can be determined by adding together the displacement or the internal loading caused by the each external load acting separately. So what is the meaning? For example, if you consider this is a, a bridge or this is a beam actually. So this is a beam where two forces are acting. So this is a, pro, a propped cantilever. So not properly, it is a simply supported beam. So this side is hinge and this side is roller. So it is a simple, uh, simply supported beam and two forces are acting on it. So one is P1 which is inclined at location B and another force is P2 which is also inclined at the D. So what is principle of superposition tells is now if, if you separately calculate all the external forces, for example here two external forces are acting. So now we'll separate it out. So one first we'll consider only P is acting on this beam. And in next instance we'll consider only P2 is acting in this beam. Then what effect will have P1 only in the beam and individually what effect will have P2 in the beam. So if you take summation of both and then you will get the final structure. So for example, so P1 and P2 both are external forces acting. So in the first instant, I will take only P1 is acting on load. P2, there is no P2. So if you see this first figure, first figure is same beam. So only P1 is acting. There is no P2 here. So now we'll analyze the structure, whatever deflection and eh, deflection of the beam or whatever the reactions are generated here, that will compute. And next, another beam we'll consider which only P2 is acting external force. There is no P1 here at the beam. So because of P2, what are the reactions generated here eh, and both the supports or whatever the deflection, whatever is there, that will compute separately. So P1, we did it separately and P2 also, we, see, we did it separately. So what principle of superposition tells is if you do, if you uh, analyze a beam or a structure uh, with a separate external forces, so P1 in one instant, P2 in another instant, now if you superimpose both P1 and P2, if you add whatever uh, uh, reaction is generated because of P1, whatever the reaction is generated because of P2 here, if you add both, you will get whatever is the net force if the both forces are acting together. So this is our final structure and P1 and P2 we computed separately and the total reaction will be summation of this one and this one. So that's what we call it principle of superposition. So principle of superposition is valid in these two conditions. What are these two conditions? First one is material must behave in an elastic manner. So where actually Hooke's law is valid, in that condition we, we can apply the principle of superposition. Similarly, the geometry of the structure must not undergo any significant changes when the applied, when the force is applied. So for example, P1 and P2 is applied. So geometry of this beam should not deflect too much. There much there may be a small deflection. So in that case, this principle of superposition is valid. So you have to you have to remember. So when these two conditions are met, then only this principle of superposition is valid. Right. Thank you.